Oyasumi Poonpoon is a manga that follows the life of Poonpoon, a boy living in a broken family. In the story, Poonpoon and his family are represented by birds, to lighten the mood of the heavy topics that the manga goes into, as well as representing what Poonpoon thinks about himself. One day, Poonpoon meets a girl, and he falls in love. Well, as much as an 11-year-old can even fall in love. The girl's name is Aiko, and she makes Poonpoon promise to rescue her from her old life, and that together, they will go to Kagoshima. As you can imagine, an 11-year-old could never keep a promise like this. Despite knowing that, Poonpoon lives with the guilt for the next nine years, until he meets Aiko again when they're both in their 20s. At the end of the story, Poonpoon and Aiko finally do run off together, their dreams fulfilled. But there are some complications. It turns out that Aiko's mother tried to kill Aiko, and in the heat of the moment, Aiko and Poonpoon together killed her mother to protect themselves. Aiko believed her relationship with Poonpoon would save her, but as the story continues, Aiko slowly realizes the truth of the matter. Despite her idealism about the life she would live with Poonpoon and Kagoshima, Aiko could never escape her old life. No guy she dated could ever let her escape, could ever solve her issues for her. Her. Not even Poon Poon. The shadow of Aiko's mother still haunted her, even after her death. But what if Aiko's mom hadn't died? I doubt Aiko's story would have ended much differently. Trauma doesn't go away, even if you're not in the immediate vicinity of the cause. It can be mitigated, sure, but never fully removed. I think this was Aiko's subtle realization during the events of Kagoshima. Poonpoon and Aiko's relationship is complicated. It's very hot and cold till the end. They shift from being passionately in love and abusive to each other on a dime. This reaction is most likely due to how they are literally on the run for murder. The stress is getting to them, causing them not to trust each other. It's like IRL Among Us. Poonpoon is sus. But I think there's also more to it. As far as we know, the only person who loved and took care of Aiko was her mother. And her mother's style of showing love was, needless to say, flawed and abusive. I think this is reflected in Poonpoon and Aiko's abusive relationship. It's clear they hate each other. Each other, but they also love each other. They could never fully connect. There's resentment there. They blame each other for the terrible situation they're in, but they also know that they only have each other. There's a lot of blame going on between them. Their lives until now had been defined by guilt and resentment for what happened when they were 11. Aiko and Pumpum both lived with these regrets for nine years. They blamed each other for everything that went wrong in their lives because of that initial event. This isn't something I agree with, but I think the protagonists are intentionally flawed. Well, if Aiko holding a fork to Pumpum's eye threatening to poke it out didn't already clue you into that fact. The author Inio Asano wants you to think critically about these characters and situations, and to draw your own conclusions. Throughout the final chapters, Aiko is always distrustful of Pum Pum. She can never fully give herself to him. I think this is when she slowly realizes the truth. Aiko was wrong. Pum Pum was never going to be able to save her. No guy could. Healing was in another direction, and I doubt she knew the way. After she realized this, she made the ultimate choice. In her happiest moments, when the feelings of loneliness and isolation were finally washed away, if only temporarily, she decided to end it all so that she would never have to feel lonely again only to subject Poon Poon to that same loneliness in her absence. I think Aiko and Poon Poon connected because of their dark past and broken families. Hurt likes to attract hurt, and in her hurt, she thought that the only person who could help her was someone as empty as her. But that's not true, is it? What do you get when you slap two lonely people together? A loneliness sandwich. Hurt does not magically heal because you add more hurt to it. This was Aiko's final realization. After finally feeling loved, she knew it would not last, so she made her final sleep. Despite the bleak ending for Aiko, Poon Poon shows that there is hope for those who are hurt. In his last moments, Poon Poon defeats the evil within him and almost dies, only to be pulled back into the land of the living by Sachi. It's telling that when we last see Poon Poon, he's with his friends, or rather, he's with his second family. People who love him, care for him. People he lives for and who live for him. The family that finally brought Poon Poon out of his shell and let him grow. As far as we know, Aiko never had friends like Poon Poon's. For example, the relationship between Sachi and Poon Poon is mutual. They both challenge each other and bring the other up, while Aiko and Poon Poon want to bring each other down. Maybe I'll compare the differences between Aiko and Sachi in another video. But lastly, I want to talk about the final chapter. What was Aiko's legacy in all this? What do those people who meant so much to us in life mean to us in death? I think the final chapter gives us Inio Asano's answer to this question, though through a meeting between Poon Poon and Harumi. Harmi and Poon Poon finally meet after 10 years apart. They talk a little while and reminisce. Eventually, they both fall silent as conversations with long lost friends tend to go. Poon Poon finally breaks the silence and says, When you left, I felt really lonely. And Harumi agreed. They shared this small moment together, despite it being revealed later that Harumi didn't even remember Poon Poon's name. And it's implied that Poon Poon didn't even remember Harumi's either. Despite this, they shared that small, intimate moment. In an earlier chapter, it's shown that Poon Poon is slowly forgetting Aiko. Despite what she meant to Poon Poon, over time, he slowly forgets her face, her mannerisms, her voice. But he'll never fully forget her. Drawing the parallel to Harumi, Poon Poon may not remember what Harumi looks like, sounds like, or even his name. But Poon Poon will always remember 
remember how Harumi made him feel. By saying this to Harumi, he's learned how to process his feelings. Even in a small way, he's learned how to heal if only slowly. Sadly, he can never say what he wants to to Aiko. Instead, he talks to Aiko in his dreams, but I doubt he'll ever fully move on from Aiko's effect on his life. Pupuin used to feel guilty for not being able to take Aiko to Kagoshima. Ironically, after finally taking her there, he now feels even more guilty, but for a different reason. Aiko wanted Pumpun to remember her after she died, but memory is fickle and solely fades. That was Aiko's final gift to Pumpun. She's now an eternal image of guilt and hurt haunting his dreams. Aiko thought that if she loved in her final moments, she'd be loved forever. That wasn't true. She hurt the person she loved most. He only feels guilt now. She thought that the person she loved would never forget her. She was wrong. Pupun had a life to live and friends and family to support. She thought that there was a way for her to never feel lonely again. Instead, she now feels nothing. Aiko thought that love would cure her, that she was never cured. That was Aiko's mistake.